We go together like a hot dog bun and wing. Cutest card ever. Yep. What's up, Nessa? What's up, Adina? Good morning. Good morning. Oh. Good morning, Miss Pig. <laughs> morning, Savannah. What's up? What's up? Yo, Kenan. I saw what you did with the groups, Kenan. Thank you very much. Good morning, Michelle. <coughs> Check. Hold on, let's, let's all pretend that we're just waking up out of bed. Here you go. <laughs> oh, good morning, guys. Hi. I love that song. That's a good one. I played that in orchestra in the Seattle Youth Symphony mm -hmm. and loved it. That's it's so fun one. to play. What's up, Josh? Good morning. Happy 15 years plus one day. That's the, that's the same thing I said to Millie this morning. I said happy day after it is. Uh, our anniversary. What's up? Man, I got a crazy brain. It goes all over this land. What, what did you think? I immediately, something said happy something day, and I immediately thought of the Adams family. Check, happy, check. happy turkey day. Let's have fun the Indian way. La, 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 have fun la, the Indian way. Happy turkey day. Yeah, it's hilarious. I mean, it's oh, terrible, boy. but it's hilarious. We go to Camp Chippewa. Yeah. What does Chippewa mean? Orphan. <laughs> Your tribe means orphan. Yeah. Okay. It's a great movie, though. I'll be the victim all your life. <laughs> you always say that. It's so funny. Hello, check, check, Why check. Why one half of my headphones work? I was just typing that Josh Dang. He beat you to it. Aaron? <laughs> no, Misty? It's what the are you best doing? one. Oh, thank you. Hello? Something is unplugged, and my I'm only hearing you in my right ear. Okay. Thank you about the makeup. Um, I like totes messed it up and I was like, oh, so I just went with it. <laughs> like I put it on wrong and I went with it. Fig leaves off. Ooh, hello. <laughs> We're getting crazy this morning. Tony uh, Carr, good morning. Okay. You ready to rock and roll? Yep. Okay. 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 We say it like a thousand times every morning. Check your levels one more time. What's up, Flower Wisdom? Hello. Good morning. Good morning, Brittany. Check, check, hello. I can hear myself just fine. Okay, I think that's good. Okay. <sighs> hello, and welcome to the Anatomy of Marriage podcast. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. Good morning. My name is Seth Studley, and today is day 65. I'm sorry. My name is Seth Studley, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. And today is day 65, titled, I Feel Like a Roommate, How to Manage Work Stress, and Do I Have Depression? And if you're new here, welcome. We have a podcast because marriage is not super easy, and sometimes it's very hard to find helpful, mm -hmm. real, raw marriage advice. So we are on episode 282 of our Anatomy Goodness. of Marriage podcast that we started because marriage is hard. Um, but marriage is also really great. <laughs> it is. It's very fulfilling. Um, <laughs> da, 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 all this great yeah. stuff. And every single day when we do our show, we go live on Facebook and Instagram, so you can join us here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what are we, Pacific Standard Time at That's 7 right. a.m.? And as always, our show is brought to you by Audible. <clears throat> Please visit audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage to get a free audiobook on us. We love audiobooks. We read them all the time. We mm -hmm. use them all the time. So get a free one on us because why the heck not? That's right. And you have been. So thank you very much. So join the other awesome, smart people because we don't want to be not smart. Okay. Uh, review of the day five stars from Jachar. Jachar. Great podcast. AOM was the first real podcast I ever purposely listened to and then continued to listen on a fairly regular basis. I started listening to it during the middle of the day of my engagement with my mm -hmm. now wife. During the middle of my engagement. Oh, sorry. I don't know where I read that from. The middle of my engagement with my now wife. I listened to an episode every time I was cooking food and then sitting down to eat or portions of them. The first season was incredible to listen to and I learned more than I thought possible while listening to that podcast. Throughout the first season, there were episode topics that sparked much needed conversation between my wife and I as we were navigating the pre-marriage road. I don't know if we would ever have talked as deeply or as intently about many of those topics. Family of origin, our differences being super important, the biochemistry that occurs between people, and more. This podcast definitely helped set me up to be a more mindful and hopefully prepared husband in marriage. So thank you, Studleys, for your constant openness, care, and wisdom. I, for one, am more wise because of both of you and the experts you have brought on the episodes. Thank you for that awesome. review. Yeah, thinking like, okay, I will help this person. Yes, and it is good is a great feeling. So, mm -hmm. thank you. And guess what? Your review 
helps us yes. in the same way it and is. also helps other people. So thank you c completely and awesomely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just have to say, someone commented right now on the Instagram that they love my hair today. <laughs> I did too. All I did is part it. Like it, it I literally did like way. nothing else. I just parted it really far. But the hard thing is I get hair hurt. It starts to hurt mm. after a while. So then I hair hurts. Back. That's no but joke. I'm glad that people are digging my crazy eyeliner <laughs> and my makeup <laughs> and my hair because yep. my hair is real dirty today, let's be honest. Hey, what's up, Paul? If you guys need any IT stuff, go to Paul. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, not <laughs> everyone is live with us on Instagram or Facebook. So okay, that's fun. right. Okay, so read the first question. question number one. Go, go for it. This one, hold on. There's a... What? Okay, go ahead. It says, my husband has a super high stress project that he's heading up at work right now. It's affecting his sleep. It's affecting our sex life. It's affecting his interactions with us at home. I do not relate to this at all. I struggle with understanding how he can't just leave it at the office and, I wor and worry about it tomorrow. But asking that wouldn't go over well. I'm not a dweller and strongly believe that what you focus your mind on is what comes to be, be it negative or positive. How do I lovingly edge him back into harmonious and positive thinking? How can I help him to be home when he's here with us? Hmm. This is a really good question. This is a good question. So I know a lot of men can relate to this, this stress, and also a lot of women too who uh, work inside the home or outside of the home. And I think from a guy's perspective, so although the, the tasks might be the same, there is definitely a different perspective and in interpretation from a guy than from a woman, mm -hmm. right? And maybe this, so I'll just use us as an example. Like I've had projects and things to do with like clients who are going through really hard times and it's really hard to turn that off, uh -huh. you know? And it's just not like, oh, I'm home because we might I might get a call or something. Of course, there's mm -hmm. boundaries around that, but then there's part of our brain that just will always, because I, I would assume that whatever his profession is, he is there for a reason and he likes it, you mm -hmm. know? So there's part of the brain that kind of gets kind of jazzed about it, but then also it's like, ah, oh, I wish I could turn this off, which that creates stress because then it's going to be, well, I have these projects at work, but I also want to be here with my family. And then mm -hmm. there's the, uh, you know, the cognitive dissonance, like mm -hmm. wanting two things at once. And that is really hard. So I would suggest that the husband try to look at really some intentional ways. My dad told me this a long time ago. He's like, yeah, when I used to come home, I would like maybe sit in the driveway for five minutes or like t 10 minutes from home. Mm -hmm. He would just like try to change his brain and go, okay, <clears throat> I'm going from work man to like dad, husband man uh -huh. kind of mode. And I've done that. Sometimes it helps. Sometimes it's just kind of going. But I think the, the wife is asking ways that she can help her husband in a way that is not stressing him out more mm -hmm. and maybe it can be like an invitation like hey sweetheart you know uh, you know little back scratch or something like that we're here I want you to be present with me right now and I don't know just a smile or so who knows what I don't know um, y yes. A conversation. I thought you were going to say more. Um, yeah, the things that I think are some practical tools around this idea is you could have like that mindfulness idea of when you're driving home saying, uh, when your husband is driving home, you could in invite him to do this practice of like, um, you know, set on a mindfulness practice and meditation on your phone or something mm -hmm. or listen to music and while you are mm -hmm. listening to that song or that practice, you are intentionally saying, I'm leaving all this stuff at work right. for this time, right? That's very, that takes a lot of sort of uh, mental awareness and ability to stay in mm -hmm. a meditative, like focused mind space. Well, it takes practice for sure. Yeah, but another thing that's less hard than that was you could do, um, or is that you could do a, almost like a, uh, like what I think of as a to-do list for tomorrow. I do to-do lists for the next day mm -hmm. so that the things aren't in my brain anymore. I right. don't write them down because, well, I will forget them, but I don't write them down because I'm like, oh, I don't want to forget. Mm -hmm. I write them down because I'm like, oh, this crab cannot rattle around in my brain anymore. So, so that's why... taking it out of here, putting it there, saying, yes. it's there, I'm not going to think about it, yeah. plus I'm not going to be worried about forgetting about it because I wrote it down. Yes, and so the husband mm -hmm. can either do this at his job, like do it before he gets in the car to come home, mm -hmm. or he can do it when he gets home. Mm -hmm. I do, unfortunately, because I don't, I work at home, mm -hmm. so I'm working all the time, I do it at night, which mm -hmm. I should probably be doing it at six when it's time to whatever. But so. hashtag summer, y'all, I cannot deal with these kids. And when they, when <laughs> Seth comes home, it's mama's time to mm -hmm. work. How's my time? I like it. Mm-hmm. I don't often get it. That's hype. Hashtag summer. <laughs> Ugh, summer vibes. So, um, uh, okay, hold on. Josh, 
one of our friends says, it's extreme, but I have an hour commute. I use that time to transition from big bad IT boss to dad, daddy, <laughs> husband. Yeah, exactly. You have to have that transition. And unfortunately, or just the state of like, I don't know, our work environments, people are like our bosses and stuff, bad bosses, I guess, don't care about that. Like if I tell my boss, I mean, they're understanding about it, but uh -huh. if I was like on 24 seven, they wouldn't say, be like, hey, slow down, because it's producing stuff. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? People so, never, I mean, it's like us on the podcast. Nobody who likes mm -hmm. us wants us to slow down. Mm -hmm. And they don't give a crap if we're crumbling under the pressure. I'm just you kidding. You guys are ruining our marriage. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> You're making it better. I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see. It says, I'm a strong nine on the Enneagram and sometimes worry that even bringing it up will create conflict. Ah. Ooh. Avoiding and moving to something happy is easier. Okay. Aaron. Well, I get that. You, I get it because I'm a nine, and that's like a soul sister speaking exactly You're what Seth's I'm saying. You're soul sister. Like, remember when I said I can white knuckle anything? I would rather white knuckle anything than be like, bring it up. I don't or like have this conflict, dinner. <laughs> you know, so it's like, ugh, geez. Yeah, but I think that's important to know about yourself. But there's a way where you don't have to bring it up in a, in a way that's conflictual, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Kind and yeah. clear, loving, gentle. Using the all traits structure. that I am not by nature, but you can do that um, in practice. Excuse <laughs> me. <sighs> yeah, so it is one day after our 15 year anniversary, and you just said I am Abby Oops. Normal. Okay, so good does anyone question. get that reference? Abby Normal? No, I'll be normal. Abby Normal. My new name is Al Go Rhythm. Anyway, that was not funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure some people thought it funny. What's up, Leslie? Okay. Okay. What this this question is from the men's group, and uh, what drives you to get out of bed in the morning? Why do you go to work every day? What motivates you to do even the simplest of tasks like tying your shoes, brushing your teeth, or even getting out of your car to walk across the parking lot to your office? Lately, it seems I only have one motivator. I just don't want to hear my wife complain. Even that doesn't matter so much anymore. This morning, for example, after getting out of bed, getting dressed, driving to work, walking across the parking lot, it took everything I had to lift my ID to the card reader. To be completely honest, I have no idea why I get out of bed when the alarm goes off, except that's what I've done for the past 25 years. I have no idea to, of um, why I get into my truck and drive to work every day or walk to the office. Throughout school and work, I have never been excited to go. I've never wanted to go... What? To school or work. It's never excited me. It's just what I do because that's what needs to be done. Even with zero energy and zero motivation, something in me knows it must be done, but I have no idea what it is. My wife is amazing. She stays home with the kids, homeschools, cooks dinner, hands the bills, deals with making any phone calls and any meeting for contractors for work's done on the house. She handles all the appointments. The list goes on, and I feel like I'm just a lump. She will tell me how overwhelmed she is, and I offer to help her out, but I fail to accomplish even the simplest of tasks. I see how overwhelmed she is, and I want to help so bad when it comes to actually stepping up. Blank. Nothing. Just blank. I feel like the one thing in this marriage I'm good at is letting my wife down. Could this be depression, low self-esteem, anxiety? I just feel like I'm going through the motions and not actually living. Yes, I think you answered your own question, and there's this thing called dysthymic disorder when you feel depressed more days than not, mm -hmm. and it's like a general kind of malaise, you know, and some people have that, but mm -hmm. they can, you know, they find purpose in their work or purpose in family or whatever. And so I, I would definitely say, yes, there are symptoms of depression, which would lead to low self-esteem, which would lead to anxiety, wanting to like please your wife, but never doing it and always just failing. That probably comes from a uh, underlying uh, depression, right? What is, how is dysthymic disorder different from depression? Um, You're so smart. It's a little bit different. Like the dysthymic disorder is like mild depression for more, more often than not for two years. Mm -hmm. So it's a long kind of thing, but there's periods of happiness. Uh -huh. And it's more like a, it's, it, major depressive disorder is like a, a true chemical imbalance, you mm -hmm. know, and just like everything just really sucks. Uh, but I think dysthymic, dysthymic disorder is like, I don't know. It, I don't know ex the exact reason, but I'm leaning towards like some chemical imbalances mm -hmm. stuff. Like, okay, there's not a, there's not a much as much of a chemical imbalance. The lows aren't as low. It's yeah. just like a, blah, oh, I kind of feel, yeah. I don't know. Sure we can, sure we can't. I don't care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So, um, yes, brother, I'm, I'm sorry, 
that's uh, this is your situation right now. I would check, uh, which this just got told to me a couple days ago, go to the doctor, have some blood work done, and check your testosterone level, right? Because going this long, feeling this way, something is clearly wrong. You know, 25 well, I mean, yeah, I, I never like this. Years. I mean, another thing is like, have family of origin stuff. You know, did your dad and mom just be like, well, this is what we do. Ugh, you know, we have mm. chicken with no salt and it's boring, you know. Or, <laughs> you are referencing my mom. <laughs> well, uh, we bring the truth. Uh, anyway, um, um, uh, yeah, I just go to work because that's what I do. Yeah. Do I like my job? What? Liking a job? Why would you even think of liking yeah. a job, you know? Yeah. And a lot of people have that attitude because maybe, um, you know, it's like going going to work and being super excited and motivated you know, wasn't, I don't think, a thing in the, like, 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s. There's, no. like, we're just surviving. I got a job. Sure, it's in a coal mine, and I'll be dead in 20 years, but... I who, got a job. I got a job, mm -hmm. right, kind of thing. This sounds like that. So, what, what, take an inventory of what you do, what you do like, you know? Tell me about a time, dude, that you liked, you know, something you were doing. Was it woodworking? Was it cutting grass? Was it a landscape thing? Was it... Working out in the gym. Is, was it, it, painting? is, is it, it painting? Is it writing? Is, is it, it is water it, skiing? Is it anything? And I'm not saying, okay, yeah, I have a major career change or anything like that. But I would go to the doctor. I would talk about antidepressants. I would talk about anti-anxiety medication. Uh, what are you eating? Are you eating trash all the time? What is your exercise routine? Do you take a walk? Do you do nothing? What do you do to de-stress? You know, well, I don't know. I just drink and blah, blah. So it's like, okay, let's look at all these things. Let's look at your, your brain. Well, um, yeah, your brain, your body, your belief. What do you believe about yourself? Biopsychosocial, spiritual. Right. Is this all that you have? Um, and then I really would go get your testosterone levels checked. I just did that two days ago. I haven't gotten the results or yet. Or a general panel, not just your testosterone. That's just a thing. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. you could. There's lots of different things. It might be a there. thyroid but, issue. Yeah, I'd say there could be thyroid stuff there. Yeah. But there are a couple things that I want to say about this. Is that um, for one. <sighs> Yeah. Ugh, I have so many feelings. I don't know that I can put them into words. Let it but, out, girl. <clears throat> so, what I think of is that, like, you have to figure out for yourself what brings you joy. Mm -hmm. So stupid sounding. Much harder than it is <laughs> to easier to say Give that than to do it. How did so, you find what brings you joy? Well, I found out what didn't bring me joy first. Mm. What didn't bring me joy was thinking someone else would make me happy. This is very much like our son right now. Mm. You didn't buy me the right thing for my birthday. This isn't the jacket I wanted. It's itchy in the tag. Now I'm unhappy. Oh, I thought we were going to go get Starbucks and go to Ivers. Like I thought more was more. Mm -hmm. I thought more was better. I thought I will get the things I want and then I will have joy. Yes. And it didn't work that way. And I was that I functioned in that modality for like 25 years. I thought more, give it to me. I want it. It's mine. I mm -hmm. have it. Now I have it. I should be happy. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't. I had all this crap. And I'm talking about all this crap. We had so much like things, motorcycles, cars, bikes. And I'm not talking fancy stuff. I'm talking like redneck stuff. Uh, we had clothes we didn't wear. We had trinkets and pictures and target galore, everything. Right. <laughs> and I was never happy. Like I was really, really unhappy. Mm -hmm. And um, so it took me figuring out what didn't make me happy to dive deeper into going, what the crap does make me happy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and when we went through our stuff we went through in season one, if you haven't heard season one, go listen to the first 13 episodes of our podcast. Mm -hmm. I wanted to die. I was having major suicidal ideation. I was like daydreaming about crashing the car. I was thinking about it constantly. And there was this moment where my brain like flipped. And, and so here's why I'm bringing all of that up is that right now we're going, with, going through a lot of mental health struggles with one of our children. And it's very hard because I understand fully what mm. he thinks when he's upset. Mm. I understand when he says I would rather jump off the balcony than talk to you. I understand that feeling like viscerally. I get it. I would rather crash into the median of the freeway then go home. Mm. I would. That seemed so much easier to me. It did yep. at the time. Like no truth would break through that mindset that I had at the time. And I get it. My kid feels that way, and I get it. And I know how dark that place is, and I know how depressing it is, and how hopeless it feels. 
But the answer was not some giant, like, hot air ride balloon thing, like, woo, it's carnival. Mm -hmm. The answer was, like, slowly identifying what I had wrong for so many years. And like you were saying, we live in a society where everything is handed to us. We didn't. We used to get a job because we would die if we didn't have one. Mm -hmm. Now we get a job because well, you got to pay your bills, right? And like food is microwavable. It's instant. You don't work for anything really, mm -hmm. right? Like nothing is hard. We don't. And so in the past, what was like like furthering yourself was getting a career that was like enjoyable or had status. Now it's like whatever. Who cares? No one cares. And the new version of that is um, like what's the word? What is Maslow's hierarchy of needs? The top one, self-actualization. Mm -hmm. If you're not familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, maybe look into that. And it's a triangle. The bottom is like air and water and food. And then the higher you go up, it's things like relationships, self-love, understanding. And the very tippy top is self-actualization. Mm -hmm. So what I think is going on <coughs> is that you've, you've done a lot of really great things. So I want you to get that first. But then as you go higher up in life and the world and whatever, you need to find that tip of that pyramid where you're actually feeling in, invigorated by something. It literally could be anything. Learning a new skill, mm -hmm. riding a skateboard, talking in French. I do not care what it is. Talking in French. What? People learn <laughs> languages because it's fun. And, they, the and it makes them feel good. Like, so, so I want to really encourage you to, to really think about when do you feel significant joy? Mm -hmm. it could, again, it could be drawing pictures of flowers. People love that kind of stuff. It could mm -hmm. be bird watching. It could be surfing. It could be um, writing poetry. It could be being in an orchestra. I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. Do not judge what means, brings you joy. Um, as long as it's something that's not damaging to your family, right? right. Um, but then the other part of that is I want, if you can get to this space, then I'm going to tell you a really quick story that's terrifyingly sad, horrifically sad, but I want you to think of Great. perspective. Okay. I have a friend that um, I knew of 10 years ago who has mm, five kids and mm. her husband just died in a car accident. Mm. She has a one-year-old and her oldest kid is like 10 or 11. Mm -hmm. Now, ma'am, you have kids, I think. Mm -hmm. You've got a wife. Yeah, it's hard. You feel like you don't know why you get out of bed. Mm -hmm. What if you can't? What if you are gone and you could see what your parent, what your family is missing. If mm -hmm. you could see the loss that you bring in your absence, mm -hmm. it might help you understand the value you have in your presence. Mm. You are powerful. And I don't mean that in a manipulative, weird way. Mm -hmm. I mean, you bring a gift to this world that nobody else brings. If Seth leaves this world, he's not going to be replaced by somebody else. There is no other Seth in, in the world, mm -hmm. right? You're that person to many people. And you've got to, you've got to like, transfuse that into your mind you got to transmute it into your soul you have to accept that and breathe it and understand it and let that fuel this new awareness and awakening and presence and understanding that's a really good point because i want to say something in me knows it must be done but i have no idea what it is maybe you don't have to know what it is i don't i don't have to know the composition of a glass of water I mean, I make sure it's clean water, right? But to be like, oh, I can't be refreshed unless I know exactly what's in here. Yeah, yeah. What are the chemicals? Yeah, that's right? a good point. So that's in you, right? You said it. I didn't say it. I'll read it again. I Something in me knows it must be done, but I have no idea what it is. Something in me knows it must be done. Start from there. Mm -hmm. Boom. Because I know, I'll call you out, brother. You had other comments, and they were kind of complaining. Well, my wife did this and this and this. What we focus on expands, and it, we will manifest good or bad. Like somebody else said in the, the thing, um, uh, let's see, well, I, another person says, I strongly yeah. believe that what we focus our mind on is what comes to be. It, negative or positive. Negative or positive. Mm -hmm. What are you looking at, man? What are you looking at? Yeah. I mean, and, and, in, in, your, in your brain, yeah. not like with your eyes. And I want to say too, like, this is going to sound really silly, but I've done this forever. So mm -hmm. I have to, the task of being a stay-at-home wife. That's amazing and sometimes super boring and crappy mm -hmm. and when I'm scrubbing a bathtub sometimes with like other people's grime in it and I'm you know cleaning a toilet with other people's skid marks in it um, <laughs> and it feels like this is the dumbest life ever I have to tell myself like 
No, what are you saying? Mm -hmm. this, is a, this life is something that millions of people all over the world would be incredibly jealous of. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna actually use that to my favor to empower myself and then I'm gonna be like, F yeah, I did it. I walked across the parking lot. I put my ID thing to the door. I kicked A at work today. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because it matters. Because right. all of life matters. Like This stuff matters and you can infuse meaning into your day on your own mm. you can and then again if you have depression if you have thyroid disorder if you've got there's many things that could be getting in the way of that mm -hmm. so i'm not saying just white knuckle it do it harder blah. Right. Um, i'm not saying that but i do think that we under appreciate the concept of injecting our own minds and spirits and souls with the wonder that the world is and has and the fact that you're a human is amazing mm -hmm. Okay, so time for some comments. Uh, let's see. I wonder if it is open up to his wife about this because if she is so busy at home, she might not notice and having your partner hear you and support you uh, in your journey to health would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yes, that NPR Hidden Brain episode. Dude, that's such a Gary Vee-ism. That's funny because I don't know who said something Gary Vee. Maybe me because I listen to him all the time. That's a powerful thought. Thank I like you. how you just assume it was you. <laughs> yeah, so listen to it. Yes, so good, Mel. And then somebody else says, where focus goes... Where, Where focus, focus flows, flows, energy flow. You know what? Tony Robbins. Dan Siegel says that too. Yep. Well, and we'll and here's the third. Hold on, move ahead. So Tony Robbins says that Dan Siegel has a third one, and you listen to this. Mm. It's where focus flows, and no, it's where focus goes, energy flows, and neural connection grows. Mm. The crap we focus on changes our neural pathways. Yep. I'm not kidding so if i sit and think mm -hmm. about how crappy my family is and how dumb my house is which i've done that before mm -hmm. while sitting in a beautiful home with a healthy family mm -hmm. and i've sat there and thought about how dumb it is how unfortunate it is it's not fair right and i created these pathways in my brain that were like yep everything sucks check yep so you then, are being a victim check mm -hmm. right and i totally agreed with it and then my so brain then wired you don't that way. even you don't even have to do work to think that way oh yeah right mm -hmm. like think about a track like if i build a train track all i have to do is literally wake up get on I'm, the train I'm in no not even get on the train you just have to wake up you're already in the carts and guess what there's gravity so you're just going to go it's down like that negative track indiana jones they just push down the coal mine exact yeah so i think it's really important so it's where energy goes no where focus goes, energy flows, mm -hmm. and neural connection grows. Like it's that That is important. good. I like Dan that a lot. Siegel. Somebody says, music is powerful. Spin your commute, blasting your favorite music to pump you up in the tiniest bit. That. That's right. Definitely blood work. I felt like that for two years. Whoa, that's a long one. I felt like that for two years um, and got out of bed only to do what I had to do to take my son to survive. Other than that, I couldn't care less. But it turns out there were some vitamin deficiencies and all this other stuff yeah it, it matters it totally matters it's it's true i wish more than anything that i could be home with my son mm -hmm. instead of stuck at work all day sometimes what we have or what we are, are ungrateful for what somebody else would give anything for if we continue to live our life like that we will prohibit any personal growth we need to learn to be content where you are bloom where you are planted that's that's true however that's hard so i don't want to be like Oh, do this, you know, say this. Like, we know that it's hard, but also we say these things because we know they're true. Yeah. And the truth is not easy. And it's crap we've been through. I don't feed you something I ain't had to eat myself. Mm. Right? Girlfriend. That's right. Okay. All right. Thank you for that question. Yeah, thanks and thank for you that for all question. Your uh, keep it up. Um, thank, you're on the right track reaching out to the men's group, but mm -hmm. focus on something different and maybe find a group of dudes who will like get real with you. Go, go. He's join. in the men's group. We are. Hmm. Men's crap. I have some thoughts. Anyway, More but like you, can, I meant like in IRL in real life. Like go oh, to a, IRL. um, like a what's that? Like a like a fitness thing where they smash tires on stuff and climb on CrossFit. chains. CrossFit. Okay. Go do a CrossFit with people who are like you and like want to improve themselves, and you can like punch each other and be like, "Woo, life is great." Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, I've been married to a wonderful woman for ten years. We're on the same page financially, spiritually, and we laugh at each other's jokes every day. The one area we struggle is our sex life. I had a tough childhood. I learned not to ask for things because the answer was usually no. My wants were not priorities. Now I'm passive and fearful of, of initiating. It's easier to wait for her to start things than risk being rejected. 
But between that and the conditions for when sex can happen, no mornings, nothing past 9 p.m., I've started to feel like more of a roommate than a spouse. If you have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. Um, sounds like you might be a number nine, putting your, need, putting your needs behind everybody else's and not... Uh, being comfortable with conflict. Oh, guess what? That's me. Okay. I know. I literally was like, did you write this question? I know. Because so, it sounds exactly like Seth. That's right. Um, what are your thoughts on that then? Other than him being a nine, potentially. Oh, uh, well, let's see. I think and feel this way. Mm-hmm. So, I don't necessarily have an answer. I think no. I know <laughs> what to do. Um, what do you uh, think? Oh, let me ask it this way. If you were a personal coach looking at your life, mm-hmm. hashtag Cody Jefferson, mm-hmm. and y- you were coaching yourself, mm. what would you tell yourself if you wrote this question in? I would give myself, oops, sorry. I will give myself a motivational speech. Like, How would it go? Bro, you got this. You're not going to be scared. You're going to be straightforward, and you're going to let your n- needs and wants be known in a you know a normal way, not just like a bull in a china shop or whatever. And you're gonna do it. So I would like pump myself up. What was it psychologically? Mm-hmm. What what is the steps that you're going to take to get to the do it part? The do it part. You said you're gonna do it, but what does that mean? Practically. It means kind of think about it during the day. Think about um, even this is kind of a hard thing for me. <laughs> You know what I mean? I do. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get you to get there, and you don't get right. there. And that's fine. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's approach it really practically. All right. Here. What would you say to this guy? Same well, thing what you I told would say before. to you, yeah, right. like these are. Um, uh, I want to think of it as a different way. So the way that, and I'm going to relate this to our kid right now, and family things with our kid. And mm-hmm. I know that might seem weird, but um, one thing that our kid often does is, at, when it's too late, he starts telling you what he couldn't do, he didn't do during the day. Mm-hmm. So I've started this new thing where I'm like, you're going to write me a list of three things that will make it feel like this day was air quotes fun, mm-hmm. and we're going to do at least <laughs> one of those three <clears throat> things to have achieved the funness that this day could have had potentially, mm-hmm. right? So this is what I see happening with you. You go, I want to be intimate with my wife. I want to feel like romantic, happy connection. But then you don't do anything. And Mm -hmm. then it's 10 o'clock and you're like, this day wasn't fun. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? You didn't even say anything. Right. Right. So what I would say is figure out what you want Mm -hmm. first. Figure out what you want. And then write at least three of those things down for any given day. So let's say on a Wednesday, you're like, I really want to be with Melanie. These are the things I want to do. I do not care what's on that list, mm-hmm. right? It could be go to yummy yogurt. It could be have wild sex. Mm-hmm. It could be watch Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. again. <laughs> uh, but write them down, mm-hmm. right? So that your wife knows what you want. It's not accusatory. You're not saying you suck. You never have crazy sex with me. Mm-hmm. It's not that. It's I'm telling you what I actually want in a way that is very clear. Mm-hmm. Other than I'm going to think about it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to motivate myself because that's actually <laughs> not enough. That's actually right. not enough to get there, right? right? Mm-hmm. Um, so being really practical about what you want, how do you present that to your partner? And then it's easy. If you know the guidelines. Nothing past 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. That means start at 8, start at 7.30 with foreplay, right? Whatever that looks like, whatever that is. And it, they're so that your answer is in your question, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like you're... Like nothing in the morning. Okay, no big deal. Yeah, nothing in the morning. A lot of she... times when we write stuff out and kind of externalize the problem, because that's what you're doing, and that's a whole modality intervention <clears throat> in narrative therapy. We externalize the problem. So like when you email it or write it out and say it to somebody, like, okay, I'll I'll do this. I'll do this exercise, right? And um, like for real, like okay, I'm emailing a marriage podcast, right? Hey guys, what's up? Love the show. Uh, Seth the Melanie are totally awesome. And, uh, uh, hey, I would like to have more sex with my wife in an intimate way, not just, you know, whatever. Um, I would like more connection and pleasure. And sometimes I get, uh, sometimes I'm tired and sometimes I think, oh, it takes too much work and she might say no anyway, right? And that's a negative thought pattern that I thought. So what I really have to do is kind of uh, really think about it and be intentional around that. And I know that she likes this, this, and this. So I probably should do more of that, and I shouldn't psych myself up more, but um, I don't know. What do you guys think? What should I do? 
right? And that's mm-hmm. the ending thing. It's like, but I answered my own question mm-hmm. up until then, right? Kind of. I don't know. I don't know that you did, but... Oh, sorry. No, I'm not trying to judge what you said. I just mm-hmm. don't know that there was... I, I'm just saying you have very... This is a, like a life theme. <laughs> you have very ambiguous things, and you're right. trying to funnel them into very specific things, mm-hmm. and that sometimes doesn't actually pan out into practical things happening. It's a nine life thing. Hashtag nine life. Um, nine lives. <laughs> Um, I'm a cat. <laughs> he's a cat. But anyway, I think okay. that I think that that is a part of it. Like it's it's being clear with what you actually want and mm-hmm. writing it down, like I do with our kids. And it sounds so stupid, but that is so helpful. If it works to do then, that, it's mm-hmm. incredibly helpful, and it's helpful for you for you to actually acknowledge out loud what you want, mm-hmm. right? Like, what are you actually looking for? I really like what Brad says here. It sounds like the way that we talk it says. Think of the times when you were strong and use that to remember, see, you can do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good job. It's for reals. Let's see. Somebody else says, I get you, Seth. Sometime, sometimes writing it out leads to... The answer you're looking for. But it's mm-hmm. almost like you're seeking valid, validity in the answer you already know. That is exactly right. And as a nine, we're like, I know the answer is like that song that destroys any nine that listens Sleeping to Sleeping at last. Yeah, it's like Enneagram we song. have it inside us, but we're looking, what, is this okay? Mm-hmm. Can, can we do this kind of thing? You mm-hmm. know, so it's like, it's in there, right? It's like the sovereignty of you is there mm-hmm. and you don't actually need validation. Um, but when we get it, it feels so good. Uh, and when we don't get it, it feels so bad. And mm-hmm. makes, well, well, what am I thinking? Well, this is the wrong choice. This is the wrong choice. So yeah, yeah. that's totally, totally true. For this question and the one before this, I would highly recommend that y'all read I Hope I Screw This Up by Kyle Cease. Mm. You can also get the Limiting Game, what is it called? The Limitation, Limitation Game. game. Limitation Game mm-hmm. by Kyle Cease. That's 20 bucks. It's a video series. It's worth every dollar. Um, and it is so helpful for these type of patterns, these thinking processes, these things of like, I'm used to hearing no all the time. So? Mm. Yeah, you can be used to hearing no. That doesn't matter. That right. doesn't help you. So get, ha, breaking that cycle and starting a new way of understanding things, and that takes uh, being able to sit in the discomfort of that, right? Like, it, there's a whole thing to it. We don't need to continue talking about mm-hmm. it, but go read anything from Kyle Cease, particularly I Hope I Screw yeah, This Up and The Limitation real. Game. They're really, really amazing. Mm-hmm. And we told you guys we're going to talk about it, and we are going to talk about it not yet you're not going to talk about it. I'm okay. going to talk about one more thing. Mm. So we have uh, in the Get Your Marriage On app, there in, in, we haven't like officially, officially, officially announced the launch of it. Soft we will, launch. We're, yeah, it's sort of a soft launch because we're trying to work out the bugs. But in the app, there are conversation starters. There are all these things that will lead to um, better sex and intimacy. And y'all, I made a sex meditation in mm. that app that everybody is going to love. Uh, it's long. delicious. It's 20 something minutes long, but it's mindfulness. I'm listen to it tonight. It's to get your mind in the mood for sex. It's an in, get in the mood meditation. It's marriage friendly. It's not weird. Nothing Does it work for guys? pornographic. It works for everybody. You have genitals. It works for you. <laughs> um, but it, it is in the app. Oh and it, so that's a way like it'll get your, like your wife can use it. You can use it. It is legitimately like, this Zen meditation, it's me talking, so it's a little weird. <laughs> like if, I, I have funny thoughts about it. What a podcast? It's a podcast for your genitals. <laughs> oh. oh. Your hey, homologue. Hey, Mom. Uh, welcome to the show. <laughs> She's got genitals. It's fine. Oh, my. That's enough. <laughs> We're not going to body shame. Anyway, so people are saying things, should we? <laughs> no, they're asking about where they can find the songs. Uh, it's or Sleeping at Last podcast yeah. or you know Spotify, YouTube, YouTube because it's free, so... I'd go there and do that. Can I, you know, not talk yes. about genitals now and give a you plug here? choose to do that. Oh, my gosh. So we're uh, going to kick off a thing called AOM Group Therapy soon. And it will be a paid group. And it will be, how can I say this? It will be... Flipping a, amazing. It will be flipping amazing for sure. But it will be a targeted thing of everything that you like and find helpful about this. <clears throat> about this show, about talking to us. Um, you'll get a lot of exclusive stuff like different Facebook feed access, a private email thing where every single question gets answered no matter what instantly because we, sometimes we can't get to all of them. Seth, you know your mom doesn't watch <laughs> Kelly Stokes. <Sure. laughs> What's up, Kelly? <laughs> now things just got funny. funny. <laughs> I know they did. I hope, I hope she, well, she, she has, has watched she before, has. but who knows. Anyway, 
Um, okay, totally lost my brain on that. We're going to do about... AOM group therapy. Right. And we're really excited about it because we get so many comments about people having a very hard time finding a therapist. We had a super hard time finding a therapist that we felt like understood us or mm -hmm. that we spoke the same language or like jived with. Right. And so one of the things that we're really excited about within this is that it's less expensive than traditional therapy. Yes, it costs money. No, we're not giving everything away for free. Mm -hmm. um, but you have along with this, like you have us, right? You already speak our language. We use the same ter terminology and analogies. And so then on top of that, you have a community of people who understand the same language you speak, mm -hmm. the terminologies that you use, the analogy that you use. And I think it's so vital to the success and the health of relationships, individuals, to mm -hmm. have a community, <clears throat> excuse me, that fully understands these things. And we're working on things together, right? That's right. And what we pay for, we we value more, mm -hmm. right? Like I've said, the, the example, I can, I can make a coffee here and take it on my way to work, mm -hmm. or I can stop by Starbucks and go inside and smell the delicious coffee and like pay three bucks for an Americano and enjoy it more, right? Mm -hmm. What we pay for, we seem to value and have more investment in, right? Don't tell them that why they've gotta pay. Y'all know why you've gotta pay, don't even pretend. I'm just saying what the research says, so mm. we like to be research savvy here, right? So that's gonna be kicking off soon. We're working on it right now. And uh, remember to rate and review the podcast and email us, send in your questions mm -hmm. via email at hello at anatomyofmarriage.com and we answer them live on the show mm -hmm. or I, um, will answer it just privately through email. So anything else? Um, thank you to everyone who has rated and reviewed the show lately. It's awesome to see when we ask to see the numbers go up. Please continue to rate and review if you haven't. Mm -hmm. This is a crap ton of work. We are on episode, two, what did I say, 282, right? Right. We've done 282 episodes that are helping you. So take one second, mm -hmm. y'all. Slap your own button to gear and rate and right. review our show because that's a way you can help us. That's right? exact among If we've helped you, help us. Do us a solid and that's rate right. and review the podcast. And thank you to everybody who already has. It's amazing. All right. Um, we, we love you guys and we think you're awesome. Join the private Facebook groups. You're rad. Have an awesome day. All right. Bye. <laughs> you're rad. Have an awesome day. You're rad. Have an awesome day. What's up, Kelly? I hope you're doing good. I'm glad you listened, so that's cool. Uh, let's see. Okay. Post show. I don't know. I am so tired. <laughs> hey, so tired. How you doing? I thought your name was Melody. Boom! Another dad joke. All There's right. another comment there. I never get to watch, but y'all are awesome. Maybe another key to this bliss is marrying up. Call Seth. You did. <laughs> Look, I, this is true. This is true. I married up. I married up. Whoop. Oh, I'm sorry. Your headphones aren't oh, plugged sorry. in anyway. I'm married. I'm married up and moved out. Moved up. Moved All right. Up. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. See you later.